फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स फॉर काइंड वर्ड्स फ्रॉम चेयरपर्सन थैंक यू ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी एंड साइंटिफिक कमिटी पर्टिकुलरली डॉक्टर मनोज फॉर गिविंग मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू बायर फॉर सपोर्टिंग दिस टॉपिक एंड दिस टॉक वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक इन नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी मिनट्स द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ग्लाइसिमिक वेरिएबिलिटी विद ए कार्बोज एंड टू बी फ्रेंक विद लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स आई एम टॉकिंग ऑन ए ग्लाइसिमिक वेरिएबिलिटी एंड इट्स रियली वेरी वेरी uh near to my heart because i talk on glycemic variability across the country almost in all forums i have talked i'll be talking for glycemic variability the potential mechanism and definition the clinical implication of glycemic variability the guideline recommendation and management of glycemic variability role of acarbose what is glycemic variability it is in variation of blood glucose level in an individual over time and this is very important i am sure many of our patients also keep on complaining that sir mera sugar kabhi ghat jata hai aur kabhi badh jata hai i mean this is very common complaint by a patient to the doctor it is an oscillating blood glucose level rather than chronic hyperglycemia and that shown to be more associated with diabetes complication there are data to show that a person who is keeping slightly sugar level higher have less complication in compared to the person who is having oscillating blood glucose level the glycemic variability how it leads what is the potential mechanism it is the hypo and hyperglycemia both which leads to a oxidative stress increasing oxidative stress epigenetic changes inflammatory cytokines platelet activation and inflammatory cytokines they all makes the person more prone to have endothelial dysfunction and damage and this leads to diabetic microvascular and macrovascular complications the clinical implication because we are more interested as a clinician as a doctor who is practicing physician and whether it is really having a clinical implication subject who spent less than 50% of time in range showed more micro and macrovascular complication in type 1 diabetes and that is what we are seeing this is one interesting paper which was published in bmj in diabetes and research care a time in range is measured by continuous glucose monitor as a predictor of microvascular complication in type 2 diabetes before this only there was a debate was going on whether in a continuous glucose monitoring should we do in type 2 diabetes or not but this is a paper which shows that even in type 2 diabetic patients who have not achieving a time in range not achieving this glycemic variability less they found to have more complication even a 10% increase in time in range it means better control of diabetes less glycemic variability is associated with reduction in severity of diabetic retinopathy and reduction in severity of microalbuminuria with lower risk of diabetic kidney so achieving a hb1c is one part but reducing glycemic variability further reduces the microvascular complication this glycemic profile variability is an independent risk factor for diabetic neuropathy one more complication which is very common in type 2 diabetic patients is found to have lesser than glycemic variability there is a less chances of diabetic new to a significant higher variability in glycemic uh, profile which is fasting and post meal glucose level and you know that fasting is coming normal and post meal glucose level are very high who was observed in patient who were having more diabetic neuropathy glycemic variability is independently associated with increased risk of all cause mortality diabetes related macrovascular complication so even it is not only been only with microvascular complication even with macrovascular complication it found to be there what is the guideline recommendation now one is the glycemic targets as per ada 2023 and we all uh, have that the whatever ada is talking or whatever esd is talking we should follow it a1c does not provide a measure of glycemic variability or a hypoglycemia so you can't depend only on a1c this is what the recent guideline is talking a1c fails to identify the magnitude and frequency of intra and interday fluctuation patients with type 1 and type 2 with severe insulin deficiency prone to have more glycemic variability and such cases are best evaluated by combination of cgm and a1c the certain condition that affect red blood cell count that we know that hemoglobinopathies are one of the uh, confounding factors for getting a good a1c result too so the glycemic targets as per ada 2023 guidelines we should try to achieve a time in range more than 70% of the time a person glucose should remain between 70 to 180 with not not getting hypoglycemia it is not acceptable if someone goes more than 5% of the day 
less than 70. And that is also not acceptable if someone goes more than 5% of the time, even more than 250 milligram also. So our glycemic target, we should have less glycemic variability with sugar between 70 to 180. This is what the CGM metrics. It was proposed in 2019. I was uh, from India, who represented this expert consensus from all over the world, more than 35 experts were there, and I was one of them, rather from Asia, only two person, me, one, and another was from China. The glucose variability should be considered in combination with ANC is a more reliable indicator for glucose control rather than only A1C, rather A1C with glycemic variability should be considered. Why GV is even more significant for Indian point of view and this is very important. Why we are more worried from glycemic variability. We know that starch study, we know that we Indians eat more carbs. We know that our post meal glucose level are more in compared to the Caucasian population. Even the same amount of carbohydrate which is consumed by us and in compared to Caucasian population, we find our post meal glucose level or our spikes are higher in compared to the, the Western population. So our carbohydrate consumption is more than 70%. What we are eating across the day, I mean every time in breakfast, lunch and dinner, it's only carb and carb. So how to minimize the glycemic variability with a Indian thin phenotype patients with a type 2 diabetes where post meal glucose level are very high what they consume only the carbohydrate now how to reduce that glycemic variability a diet and weight reduction are the first therapeutic instrument i mean i fully agree that we all should have and talk to our patient for more and more lifestyle modification and try to reduce their carb content of the diet the alpha glucosidase inhibitor glucagon like peptide glp1 they have demonstrated its significant impact on glycemic if you want to reduce this post meal glucose level in a, I mean, in between 70 to 180, if you want, these are the two medications which can have significant impact to reduce the post meal glucose level, and this glycemic variability can be reduced significantly. Regarding insulin therapy, even we have come out with a very fast acting insulin which had got a good effect to control the post meal glucose level, but that does not mean the glycemic variability because, again, you may reduce the, the sugar level, but we don't know. Sometimes this also leads to uh, a post meal even hypoglycemia too. So we need to avoid hypo and hyperglycemia, both a medicine which can reduce this glycemic peak, but at the same time, the further it is going down or hypoglycemia, that should also be reduced. So influence of chronic exercise training on a glycemic variability, this is also a very important slide for those who are believing and they also try to teach their patient that it's a lifestyle modification which can reduce your glycemic variability significantly. The exercise training, even that also helps for that getting a good control of it. RSSDI in 2022, we have also come out with a guidelines on a alpha glucosidase inhibitor. Our pharmacological recommendation for alpha glucosidase inhibitor delay the absorption of consumed carbohydrate by competitively inhibiting the alpha glucosidase enzyme at the anthocyte brush border. This is particular importance in Indian setting as there is an increased odds of post meal glucose level with lipid excursion due to consumption of diet with high glycemic index. They can be used as a first line drug in early type 2 diabetes and in combination with nearly all established oral anti-diabetic agents along with insulin. So I mean you can use acarbos as a first line, as a pre-diabetic, only for controlling the post milk glucose level or even the patients who are on insulin or they are on a multiple oral anti-diabetic agent, still the AGI can be used. Action is independent of insulin and hence the devoid of hypoglycemia and adverse effects. So the mechanism of action of alpha glucosidase inhibitor, it is nothing to do with the pancreatic beta cells. I mean, it's completely independent. It is not going to increase the stress for it and that's the reason it can be used for even or the patients who are insulin deficient too. Alpha glucosidase inhibitor has unique mode of action. They delay the intestinal carbohydrate absorption. They lower the post meal hypo hyperglycemia, less insulin needed. So protection of beta cell and it improves the insulin sensitivity. 
carbohydrate in lower intestine facilitated even glp1 release and gut symbiosis also so this is the last point which many of us may not i mean take so much important point but it's very important that carbohydrate which goes in lower intestine it facilitates glp1 release and you must have seen that those patients to whom you use alpha glucosidase inhibitor even they reduce in their weight and there is a increase in satiety level too the alpha glucosidase inhibitor particularly acarbose now here i am going more for a, a acarbose molecule with a unique mechanism of action which effectively slow down the carbohydrate absorption this acarbose effectively controls hyperglycemic peak with each meal and this five, fifth point which i talked about increasing glp1 level and gut symbiosis is again unique with acarbose molecule it reduces post meal glucose level via insulin sparing mechanism so low risk of hypoglycemia this is one paper which is on effect of alpha glucosidase inhibitor drugs on acute postprandial glucose and insulin response a systemic review and meta analysis we talk about a, a patient with a reduction of incremental ppg by 45 to 50% and of 20 to 75% incremental in postprandial uh, uh, insulin level glycemic variability induces endothelial dysfunction and oxidative stress which i already talked about and it is the acarbose or agi it has been shown to prevent endothelial dysfunction it has been also associated with reduction in markers of oxidative stress and it significantly reduces the inflammatory and a cardiovascular risk marker in type 2 diabetic patients and in patients with metabolic syndrome too is there any evidence that acarbose effect on glycemic variability particularly patients who are already on insulin this is a paper of effect of acarbose and a glycemic variability in patients with type 2 diabetes who are using premix insulin in compared to metformin on a upper level randomized trial so in a randomized control trial a patients were on insulin put on either on metformin or on acarbose and you can see there is a significant higher reduction of TV, maize, and SD from baseline in the patients who are on acarbose with insulin therapy after 12 weeks, and you can see the CV reduction, CV by two, uh, maize by mean amplitude of glycemic excursion by 1.26, and SD with 0.66, and acarbose it has gone a significant p value of reduction of these thing. The prospective randomized open level study comparing the efficacy and safety of preprandial and preprandial insulin in combination with acarbose. elderly patients who are requiring insulin in type 2 diabetic patients and again you can see the addition of acarbose three times a day to a premix insulin therapy in elderly patients can reduce the blood glucose variability compared when it was given only once in a day so sometimes what we try to give only premix insulin twice a day and only in lunch time we want to give them an acarbose but if you add three times so it, there was a comparison between once a day and a three times acarbose and it had shown a significant reduction of a glycemic variability it means by adding acarbose in a patients who are already on a premix insulin there was a significant reduction in glycemic variability glycemic variability in insulin treated type 2 diabetes who are with a well controlled hp1c in response to further treatment with acarbose and there it had again shows a significant reduction in maize that is a mean amplitude of glycemic excursion the administration of acarbose leads to significant decrease in maize as well as in mode acarbose effect when if added on dpp4 we know that dpp4 are also good to good enough to control the post meal glucose level now this is one paper which is very interesting these patients were already on allogliptin it was already on alpha glucosidase inhibitor by adding alpha glucosidase inhibitor you can see significantly in a green line after the patients who are already on gliptin and after adding a carbose you can see the post meal glucose level significantly reduced and with glycemic variability is reduced like anything the addition of a carbose to metformin and vilda gliptin in control type 2 diabetes decreases intraday glycemic variability one more paper with sulfonylurea metformin which is called commonly we people the two drugs which we are using as a third drug we want to add the carbose and this is the data in the patients with the taiwan data shown a, with a significant p value decreasing the post meal glucose value one more paper from the same study a carbose metformin is more effective in glycemic variability in compared to an repaglinide we know that it's a short acting sulfonylurea which also contain the post meal glucose level but there was a comparison between a carbose and metformin and repaglinide and metformin and found to have decrease in a mean amplitude of glycemic excursion to summarize my talk 
glycemic variability is an independent marker for diabetic associated adverse outcome for micro and macrovascular complication postprandial glycemic excursion is an important contributor to glycemic variability glycemic variability burden is more in our country more for asian and indian diabetic patients owing to our rich carbohydrate diet ada recommends glucose assessment by continuous glucose monitoring and getting a time in range along with hbavc glycemic variability can be minimized by diet control by physical activity and by pharmacological therapy which i talked about the glp1 and by alpha glucosidase inhibitor agi like acarbose play an important role reducing the postprandial excursion and thus glycemic variability acarbose backed by strong scientific data showing reduction in glycemic variability and with favorable outcome with this i thank once again thank you scientific committee and chairperson for this opportunity thank you thank you uh,